This afternoon, I want to talk a little about my early childhood and my schooling, which took place in a small mining town. And my mother, actually, she was head of the Parent Teachers Association back there. This is in the early 60s. And as a result of her being head of the Parent Teachers Association, I was always in an A stream. However, when I went to senior school, boarding school, at the private boys school Falcon College in the middle of the Matabele felt things were different. It was quite far from my mother. And so when I got to Falcon College, I slipped quite gracefully from an A stream into a B stream and then very, very easily into a C stream thereafter. Then carried on. Birds were my main thing at Falcon College. I, I liked academics, but, uh, birds, wildlife, trees, that was my main interest. And uh, night tapes, little pookies. Anyway, my history teacher, when I was in Form 4C, the O-level year, was a big, tall Englishman called Dwali Ford. And he was deaf as a post, played cricket for the MCC in the United Kingdom years before deaf. And he got one of the first hearing aids. Never forget, big battery pack in his top pocket here. Wires into his ears. And he'd walk in with this rather ponderous gait. The teacher in the next classroom, behind our classroom, adjoining our classroom, was also an Englishman. His name was David Hunt. Wonderful man. Englishman, foreigner, pom, but wonderful man. And he was very dramatic next door. Literature was his great thing. Why man, he doth bestride the world, the narrow world, like a colossus. And you know, that he taught us all of that. But we could hear him through the wall of our classroom teaching us that. But Peter Ford had this hearing aid. There it was. And he was so proud of it because no one could ever hear what he was trying to say. And I'll never forget, he came into the class on the first day with his new, new hearing aid. He walked in. Good morning, pupils. And we all said, Oh, I'd better turn my new device up. Let's try this. Good morning, pupils. And we all went, Oh, I'll put it on maximum volume. And it was squeaky, me on maximum. Good morning, pupils. Good morning, sir. He just tore the hearing aid right out of his head. Anyway, that was Peter Ford. And apart from that, he used to immerse himself in doing charts on the, on the blackboard with his chalk bed. Battle of 1066, Battle of Ajna Court, whatever it was. It was this massive array of figures and datas. And you can imagine, a person like myself, I was at the back of the class, back of Form 4C class, where I could do as little as possible to do with European history. But what I did want to know is that what was going on in the classroom next door where David Hunt was the teacher, because we'd have these great, these great sayings. A man would strut, strut and fret his hour upon the stage. I think that's Macbeth. I mean, I love that man. And I wanted to see what he was doing in his class, but there was a big, thick wall between my back wall and his classroom. So I decided to drill a hole through the wall. And the first three days, I used a nail. And I started to dig this hole through the wall. Three lessons, three history lessons it took. And then the wall was so, it was very soft, I could dig, because our school was built on an old mine, the bush stick mine. So the, the plaster and the brickwork used is very soft mine dust. So you could dig. That's why the walls were extra thick. Then when it got too thick for my nail, I took a pair of dividers and I, I tied a pair of string onto the dividers and I throw the dividers and pull them out with my string and throw and then pull it out with my string. Day four. David Hunt, the teacher next door, was strutting and fretting his hour upon the stage. 
when he noticed a little eggshell crack appear on the plaster. On my side, I felt the give. And with one more strong thrust of the dividers, they smashed through the plaster, went through the wall, dropped onto the other side, and I quickly retrieved my dividers with my string. David Hunt saw this pair of dividers come through the wall, down, tied to a piece of string, and disappear back again. I waited a minute because I knew that that hole down there was filled with dust. Big hole like that. Filled with mine dump dust. On the other side of the wall, David Hunt got down on his knees, unbeknown to me, to have a look and see what had happened. On my side, trying to inspect my handiwork, I got down on my side of the wall and because of the dust, put my mouth up against the hole, took the deepest breath, and as David Hunt put his eye, unbeknown to me, up against the hole, I blew... <laughs> And a blast of white mind dump dust struck David Hunt in the eye. It looked like a big ping pong ball had hit him. And he tore through in his Shakespearean splendor into the classroom of David Hunt, of David Hunt did, into the classroom of Peter Ford, the deaf teacher, and started to shout with a ping pong ball in his head. What have they done? You've got no control. And he said, you are a very, very upsetting young man he said get back in your classroom and make an appointment to see me the next time but anyway that was my history lesson and that was david hunt peter ford falcon college in about 1968 from zimbabwe i want to say to all of you who are in isolation keep the discipline up well done we've all been extended extended around the world Keep the patience. Be patient with your family. Be patient with friends. Be patient. Lots of love. Mwah.